Today we're going to talk about this little gem, the Sony 24mm Compact G. And it wobbles inside. That is really concerning. Not the most reassuring thing, however the build is great and it did surprise me. More on that later. When Sony introduced the Compact Series, this one surprised me most because it was the widest and it was totally missing. When it comes to the 40 millimeters, there's technically the 35 that's already out there and 50 millimeters, there's technically the 51.8. Not as compact, but it is very small. There are many small 24 millimeters on the market. However, none this size made by Sony. Before going further, be sure to like and subscribe, which triggers the Sony algorithm into producing more fantastic lenses. First up, let's take a look at the design of this lens. Before getting the 24 Compact G, I assumed that this lens would be much like the 28-260. However, the look and feel is much different. The body is a shiny steel compared to a matte black of the 2860. The red cues make it look very premium, and those are the main differences. Starting off at the bottom, there is a weather sealing gasket, a nice white nub that you don't see on third-party lenses, and you can feel it. It's nice to touch. It gets you oriented in the right position to mount your lens. There's an AF MF switch, focus hold button, and the aperture wheel is glorious. Very solid steel like a G Master, just in a smaller form factor. It has one third click increments and it can be declicked as well for a smooth twisting motion. The manual focus ring feels great. There's just the right amount of resistance. The lens has a minimum focus distance of 0.24 meters or 0.79 feet. 49 millimeter front filter thread and weighs in at 162 grams or 5.8 ounces. The lens has a length of 45 millimeters or 1 and 13 16 inches and a width of 68 millimeters or 2 and 3 quarter inches. Being wider than it is long, I guess you can categorize it as a stack of pancakes. The lens hood had me confused like celebrity plastic surgery and the reason for that is because it feels like it's metal and it is metal. At the same time when you look on the inside it's plastic. It takes the premium properties of metal and places it on the outside while having the flexibility of plastic on the inside. Having a pair of rings, switches, and a focus hold button, the lens immediately feels ultra premium. How's the autofocus of this lens? The autofocus is quick and silent. Here I am playing peekaboo, seeing how fast the lens would catch up to me. And it seems instant no matter where I am in the frame. What do you think? This time with low light, 1 over 60 shutter, ISO 6400 f2.8. Next up is just tracking. How well does it track if I go in and out of the frame? What do you think? This thing is just hard to trip up. Once again with low light, 1 60th of shutter speed, f2.8, ISO 6400. What do you think? Light levels are very low and it does a great job. Of course, the most important feature of this lens is how does it fare in vlogging scenarios? Let's take a look. For this vlogging test, you'll have to excuse the shaky footage. Even though I was filming on an A7S Mark III, I was walking as if it was time for a bathroom break. Anyhow, do you think this is wide enough for your vlogging needs? I think the lens does a good job of hiding the flaws in the background. You can hardly tell how much my kids have destroyed my house. Because of the lightweight and small size, the lens is an absolute pleasure to use in this scenario. And that background blur. Is it enough for your cinematic goals? All right, just how sharp is this lens? Let's take a look. Let's compare sharpness to the Samyang 24 f2.8. Moving to the edge, wide open, the Sony is significantly better, f4, 5.6, f8, 
So you're gonna have to stop down to F8 to match the Sony on the edges and the far corners. It's gonna be the same story. Here's the Sony 24 Compact G wide open. Tender sharpness, 100%, it's pretty good. Take a look at the far corners. Here there's 2.8. Once again, plenty sharp. You can see the detail right here. That's really hard to resolve. F4, 5.6, 8, 11. F4 is probably the strongest aperture of this lens. F5.6 through 11 is plenty strong. Stop down if you need the depth of field. How does it hold up in the field? Here it is, wide open, F2.8, 100%. Sharpness is okay, could be better. Stop down to F4 and you see everything is just a little bit more crispy and probably the max at this point. Here it is again, the leaves are sharp and Christmas in the background. And this other side is sharp as well. Now let's take a look at how distorted reality looks like before correction. And I'm warning you, this is disturbing. Have a look. There is an insane amount of barrel distortion. And at the same time, it's kind of amazing that all this sharpness is recovered. Let's have a look at loca and chromatic aberration. Here's the chromatic aberration wide open. Let's see if you can even see it. There's a very fine amount. Let's have a look at loca. Here it is right here in this background. Stop down. Actually even wide open, it's not very prevalent. You can see it right here. Top down and it's gone by f4. This is a small lens with moderate aperture. Let's take a look at the moderate bokeh. When the objects are close, the background looks pretty good. Those tomatoes are nearly two meters away. What do you think of the background? And what about this nice foreground? Does this breathe like a marathon runner doing a light jog or a sumo wrestler doing gymnastics? Pay attention to how much the walls move and see for yourself how much breathing is there. I think there's a moderate to high amount. Could be worse, a lot worse. Up next is the coma performance. I guess you might do astro with this in a pinch. This is a four second exposure. And let's have a look, 100%. And there is a little bit of coma right here. So this does only okay for Astro. Keep in mind the noise will be very high and you'll likely need to denoise a bit. Let's have a look at the flare and sunstar characteristics. Here it is wide open. There's not much flaring going on. It's highly resistant. Stopping down to F16. You can see the small blobs. Otherwise very clean and I love the sun stars. Some final thoughts about this lens. It's small, it's sharp, it's lightweight, and kind of expensive like Asian women. Oh, hi there, mister with camera. You were saying? <gasps> if you're looking for consistency, this lens can give it to you. Say you have the GM series. Now you want a smaller alternative. The compact series, you have the 24, 40, and 50, and you have the 24 GM, 35 GM, 50 GM. That's close enough. If you're using the button switch, aperture wheel 
this will feel right at home for you. And I can say that that was something that's sorely lacking on previous Sony lenses, and that small and meaningful change can mean a lot. I found that this lens was a total joy to use coming from the G Master. It is just so much smaller and the build quality is ridiculous. I wish it cost less. However, consider that an early adopter's fee, I do feel that the price will go down. And this is made for those travelers that want to save the most on weight and size and okay with the f2.0 aperture. I think Sony did a solid with this lens. There aren't many compromises when it comes to optics. It'll give you full 30 frames per second on an A1 and it's simply a very enjoyable lens. If you enjoyed this video, do me a solid like, sub, share. See you in the next one.